Good morning, everyone. I'm Jessica, and today I'm here to share with you how to make block 16 of the 2023 Scrappy Sampler. This block is a foundation paper piecing block, one you've probably seen over and over in classic quilts. It's a pineapple block, but it's not difficult at all, and we're going to work through it together. Let's get sewing. Here I have the template that I have on the blog. It's a two page template because this block is eight and a half inches square, so it doesn't all fit on one page, which means that we have to um, piece it together. So I just roughly cut it out, and now I'm gonna do the portion where I fit the two pieces together to make one block. So you'll see on this block, there's this black line here, and it's also on this other page. So on one of them, you're gonna cut very carefully right along that black line. Be as exact as you can here because this will affect the exact shape of your block. Once you have cut down that line, what you're going to do is line this edge up with the black line on this paper. And you're making sure that your edges are matching. So that's like around the block where your seam allowance is, all of the parts of the block. And once you have it in place where it looks good to you, I need to just move this like a hair. There we go. Then you can tape it. And I have some, I'm gonna use just scotch tape here. And I usually just get one down so that I can pick up my hands and use my hands now. And then I will just tape the remaining length of this. You can use glue if you want, but honestly, I've had the best results with tape here. Okay, and now we have our block together in one piece and we can start sewing. If you've been following along with this quilt along, you'll know the process of foundation paper piecing by now, and this is no different than any other block that we've made. It's very similar to the courthouse steps, just the way that we're putting, the location that we're putting the pieces on is a little bit different. So in the courthouse steps, we only had four sides, and now we have eight. You'll put these pieces on in the same manner, and then you'll just vary the angle that you're assembling them. It's a very easy block. It does have a lot of pieces though, so it takes a little bit of time. You'll see that in my block, the way this is colored, I have my whites here and my colored portions going out on this diagonal. Feel free to change that if you'd like. You can vary the look of a pineapple block by changing the location of the colors versus the backgrounds. So if you wanted to change it, you could make your, back, your colored portions where I have my white and vice versa. We've also learned in previous blocks the way you correctly measure the pattern to decide the size pieces you need. Now this block is really awesome for scraps because you've got some really little uh, tiny pieces here to use up tiny scraps and they really don't get much bigger than four and a half inches giving you a good seam allowance on each side. But again as a refresher the way we measure say right here I'm looking at a 43. I'm going to hold my ruler up and I need to put my ruler a quarter of an inch above the top of the line and I need to look about a quarter of an inch below the line. So about a quarter of an inch below the line would give me just over one inches, maybe like one and an eighth if you wanted to get really close. And then you need to look beyond each point to see how wide. So if I move this over to give myself at least a quarter of an inch seam allowance here, I could use a four inch block. So I'm looking at this corner, which gives me a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going down here. This ends right at three, quarter, three and three quarters, but to give myself a quarter of an inch seam allowance, four, I would need four. So for piece A43, the smallest piece I could use would be an inch and an eighth by four inches. Personally for this block, I have a bunch of one and a half inch strips. And that is what I'm going to be using. So I found like um, some, I had already cut these for other blocks and they're just left over. So I have one and a half inch strips. And then what I'm going to do is just look at the piece and give myself, a, you know, a quarter to a half of an inch on each side of the point and then just cut. So I'll just like snip here as I go. 
Um, so I'm planning on using my one and a half inch strips to finish this block with the exception of the center, which I'm using a two and a half inch square. And then these corners, they, you need a little bit more there because they're not quite like in these, the points are all cut off. So you need a little bit bigger. So I'd make for that one, let me just show you how you measure that. This is how I would do it anyway. I would line up my quarter of an inch with the, uh, dark line. Unless you want to go half of an inch around, you can do that too. But let's start with a quarter of an inch. And then I would see where the diagonal falls. So let's see. And then I give myself some extra. So I would say if you cut a two inch square and then cut it on the diagonal, you will have enough to do two corners. So if you're cutting this out, you want to maybe do two two inch squares, each of them cut on one diagonal, and you'll be left with four triangles for the corners and that should work for you just fine. So to get started, all you do is just like we did before, we're gonna follow a numerical order and start assembling. Here's where I'm at so far. I'm just about to start adding the last two colors of this round. I just wanted to give you a little view of what it looks like. So I have two more blue to add and I'm following the same process as I did as if there were just two strips on the paper. Once I start sewing, back stitch. There we go. Turn this away. making progress here and the block is starting to look really nice. I'm just going to press it here so you can see it more clearly. And here's what I have so far. I still have quite a bit left to go, but it's already looking really beautiful. The pineapple shape is starting to come out. Here's my process so far now. I'm making progress and it's looking great. It feels good to really move through this block because with every turn, you're like, oh, that's pretty. And then you add another color and it just keeps going. So it's a really fun block to see unfold as you go. So I have everything finished except my last pieces of the corner. Now I have really oversized corners here, but it's because I'm using cutoffs from a previous block. So I am just laying this here. We're doing it the exact same way as before. Sewing these on and I will trim this. And then after we add these corners, the next step is to just press the block and then we're gonna trim it. So I'm gonna continue adding corners and once I have them all on, we will move on. I have the block here and I'm just pressing it. I'm making sure everything is just laying nicely, especially these corners that I just added, that they're sitting back all the way. And um, that even this like excess overhang right here is laying nice because if it is, it's just gonna make trimming this much easier. Once I have the block pressed here, we're gonna go trim it. So here's the block that we just finished sewing. It's pressed and ready to trim. The next step is to flip it over and we're gonna work on trimming it. I just wanna remind you about the lines. So if you look really close, you'll see that there's a dotted line on the outside and a solid line on the inside. The dotted line is where you need to cut when you trim. So the space between the solid line and the dotted line is your seam allowance. So we're cutting on the dotted line and then later, when we're sewing the block into our quilt, we'll be using a quarter of an inch on the outside to be our seam allowance. So we're gonna take the papers away. You won't see this black line anymore, but if it was there, that is the line you would be sewing on when you're sewing your block into your quilt. So I just lay it down and I like to do this with, if, if I have it, a ruler that is bigger than my block. It just makes it a lot easier or at least the exact same size. Then the quarter of an inch line on my ruler, I line it up with the solid line. 
and that is making it so that the edge of my ruler is actually right on the dotted line and that's where I'm going to cut. So I'm going to make two cuts, the side here and the top and I'm going to just grab my scraps out of the way now. And then this is what we have here. We have a block that's trimmed on two sides. Here's what it looks like from the front. And this other part still needs to be trimmed. So now we turn it around. This is an eight and a half inch block. So the left side and the bottom side should line up with the eight and a half inch mark. And then the quarter of an inch line on your ruler should still be on the solid line. And when you have that all lined up, you can go ahead and cut the excess away here. Now, here's a look at your finished block. So this is what our pineapple block will look like. The next step is to just remove all the paper. I have my block here. We just trimmed it and it's beautiful and it looks so nice from the front. The next step is to take out this paper. You can't leave the paper in it because it would be really weird in the quilt. It wouldn't wash right. It wouldn't feel nice and soft. So you do have to remove it. The paper is only there for the purpose of sewing a perfect block on the lines of the printed pattern. And what we do is basically just very slowly um, take out each line. It does take some time, um, but it's not, it's kind of like just like a fun mindless job to do. So I usually just work on one section at a time. Here what I'm going to do is I'm going to free all the corners until I get to this piece. Now you can of course can do this any way you want. You're just pulling out paper. It's not, it, it doesn't have to be done a certain way. As long as you're not ripping apart your seams, uh, it's fine. So I, but, but what I like to do is I like to fold the paper. And it kind of gives me, because we use the shorter stitch length, it kind of makes it, it's like already like perforated. So I just free one and then I press it down and then I just rip along the perforations that were the stitches. And it just comes right out, even with the tape. It, um, it's, I'm working, I just worked over a tape portion now. It's not any more difficult to take out um, the tape portion. Now you can see both of these corners are out. So the next one that would make sense would be this one. And I just work from the outside inward, just getting these pieces um, out. If you have a really tricky spot, you can use tweezers that helps pull if you're having like paper stuck like under your sewing like your seam line you can use a pair of tweezers and that that is helpful sometimes even just like using a pair of tweezers or a carefully a pair of scissors to just hold on let me show you let me pull this one out so that was my edge that was really easy because the top part was not sewn to anything but like see how the next one I would do is this one. Now it should just come up nicely and I, I do believe it will. Like see how I just wiggled my finger under there and it came up nicely. Uh, but say it wasn't coming up nicely, what could you do? You could carefully use just like one part of your scissors to just gently get under this and like lift it up. You can do that. And this one is still attached here. so. Um, it will take me a second to rip this out because I didn't go in order, but that will show you that really you can do it anyway. And this right here, what I'm ripping out now is a taped line. So there's a little bit underneath that was from the other piece where we taped them together. So there's kind of like a double layer there and you'll see there's just this little piece stuck. Now I got that out, um, but if I was having a hard time getting that out, tweezers would have come in handy there. And you just keep going and taking out all of the paper here. I kept working and I'm almost finished here. I have two pieces left. And this last one should just pop out because it's not being hooked to anything else. And it does. And here is our pineapple block. I hope you see it's really not difficult, although this is a time consuming block, but the results are stunning. And you'll be so proud of yourself when you make this one. Whenever I do one, I always feel really accomplished at, at the end of it. So I hope you enjoyed this block. And this is the last one for this week, but I will be back next week to do three more blocks. So thanks for following along and I'll see you soon.